Not a bad rookie campaign for Matt Boldy. Could it have been a Calder winning campaign had he stayed healthy all year? Plus, what does Boldy need to work on into next season? And where does he stand amongst the rest of the Wilds team going forward? We answer all those questions with Matt Boldy's 2021-2022 season eval today on Locked on Wild. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network your team every day. Thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. And just as a reminder, Lockdown Wild is free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts. On today's episode of Lockdown Wild, we put a letter grade on Matt Boldy's 2021-2022 season. And uh, we look at where he ranked amongst rookies in the NHL to see whether or not he could have won the Calder Trophy uh, with how his numbers turned out in the games that he did play. And we'll also look at where Boldy stacks up amongst the rest of the Wild roster moving forward. My name is Seth Topal, host of Locked on Wild, veteran Minnesota sports content producer with well over a decade's worth of experience covering your favorite Minnesota sports teams and uh, now decked out in Minnesota Wild green, covering them for Locked on Wild. Happy to have you along for the 500th episode in the history of Lockdown Wild. Uh, so uh, thank you again, as always, for tuning in and uh, keeping up to date with us as uh, part of Locked On Sports. So Matt Boldy, the, uh, the name that I think was one that everybody was plenty intrigued about heading into the season, but uh, unfortunately for Boldy had to deal with some injuries which led to his season and NHL debut coming well into the year and left his mark on this team, I think, from the get-go. Um, came in and created the second scoring line that this team really needed heading into the playoffs. Obviously, as with pretty much everybody on the team, the postseason numbers um not anywhere near what the regular season numbers were. And so uh, factoring that in for everybody on this team. But uh, you look at what Boldy was able to do uh, with Fiala and Goudreau, created that dynamic scoring line. And Boldy, I think the most important thing for young players is showing that they belong at the NHL level. There really was no doubt with Boldy from the time that he stepped onto the ice for the first time to uh, getting paired up with uh, Kevin Fiala on that uh, that line. He really showed a lot of promise and a lot of poise, and uh, I think has shown that he can be a very exciting player for this Minnesota Wild franchise going forward. Now, obviously, before too long, there are some contract things that are going to need to be ironed out uh, between Boldy and the team. But for now, um, just really impressive with what he was able to do and what he was able to contribute to this team. Uh, just very, very above average puck handler and uh, just just showed a real strong ability to um, to help this team in a lot of different ways. And so you know it's it's no accident that he was one of the more successful wild players on this team. Um, body of work. You know, 47 games played, he had 39 points, 15 goals, 24 assists, was a plus 17 on the season, had uh, 10 points on the power play, three power play goals, seven power play assists, and a couple of game winners as well, uh, averaging 15-23 per game on the ice, and that's as a 20-year-old. That is a pretty impressive performance for a young player hopping into the NHL. And so, you know, and we'll talk about kind of what is next for Boldy, but I wanted to look at where he ranked among 
rookie skaters, considering that he only played 47 games. He ended up 10th in the NHL in points with 39. Uh, Again, in just the 47 games played, Michael Bunting of Toronto led the way with 63. Then Trevor Zegris with 61. Then you have uh, Lucas Raymond and Moritz Sider from Detroit with 57 and 50. And then Anton Lundell of Florida with 44 uh, rounds out the top five. Um, Goals wise, Boldy was 10th as well. Uh, so 10th in points, 10th in goals for a rookie. I do find it funny that the player that uh, ended up behind him uh, in both categories was Rem Pitlick. Shocker there. Uh, but y- you look at what he was able to do in just that 47-game span. Uh, if you extrapolate his numbers over the course of 82 games, 26 goals, 42 assists for a grand total of 68 points. Now. You may have gotten that level of production over an 82 game season. You may have gotten less than that. I just, I find it interesting that if he plays even close to a full season, he probably is right up there and is probably one of the finalists for the Calder trophy with those numbers. Cause let's say, let's say he plays 80 games and finishes with 60 points that puts him third. Even if he finishes with like 25 goals, that puts him tops in the NHL um, in that category. And so a full season with Matt Boldy probably wins him the Calder, and the Wild probably have a second consecutive Calder Trophy winner. But unfortunately, that's not how it played out. And so we as fans got a nice sampling of what Matt Boldy can bring to the table. And why I think he is an exciting player for this team to watch moving forward. Now, way down the line, he may end up being a player that pairs up with Kirill Kaprizov on the top line, depending on how things shake out with the uh, the rest of the top six. He might be, he is talented enough to be that kind of player. The question of whether or not he will be, you know, it, there are, other things that uh, have to factor into that. But all in all, an incredibly successful season for Matt Boldy. And I think another season, I I feel like a broken record in going through these letter grades for all of these players. And I I don't see any way that you can give Boldy anything less than, you know, an A or an A minus. And there have been people in the comments that have pointed to, you know, the postseason numbers were not great. Boldy had the one goal through the six playoff games. Well, get in line. (laughs) Everybody on the team, pretty much, with the exception of Kirill Kaprizov and a couple of other players, did not play well in that series. And so, yes, it needs to be factored in, but at the same time, it's not like Matt Boldy, Kevin Fiala, were by themselves performing poorly and the rest of the team was doing all right. By and large... Everybody did not play super well in that series. So um, they factor in, but at the end of the day, the overall body of work for Boldy as a 20-year-old in the NHL, I think is super impressive. And so he's going to get the uh, official stamp from Lockdown Wild. And uh, we're, we're going A. I'm going with an A for Matt Boldy because... He just was a player as soon as he got on the ice for the Minnesota Wild. He didn't leave any doubt that uh, he was ready to perform at this level. So a a fantastic season for Matt Boldy. Now, some things for him to to work on as his career grows, um, I think are some things that we had questions about with Kirill Kaprizov after his rookie season in the NHL. So while all of this promise for Matt Boldy exists and all of the good things that he was able to do over the course of the season. There is, of course, room to improve and things for him to do as we move forward. So we'll look at uh, some of the areas that Boldy can improve his game as he continues to grow. That is uh, coming up on today's episode of Lockdown Wilds after this. Today's episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. 
With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning like is your Odyssey an LX or an EX? And why wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Plus, you can save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend anywhere from 30 to 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? RockAuto.com is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years, and RockAuto.com's prices are reliably low for every customer. So head to RockAuto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Make sure to write Locked On in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. All at rockauto.com. Continuing today's episode of Lockdown Wild, once again, thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Listeners, we do have a favor to ask you. We've put together a survey so we can learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite Lockdown podcast even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and don't about Locked On Podcasts. So head to LockedOnPodcasts.com slash survey right now to get things started. It won't take very long, and everyone that completes a survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. To take your audience survey, head to LockedOnPodcasts.com slash survey, and thank you, as always, for your participation. Remember what we said about Kirill Kaprizov after his uh, first taste of postseason play against the uh, the Vegas Golden Knights, one of the things that was kind of a concern, and rightfully so, was that teams were going to treat Kaprizov with more physicality uh, to try to slow him down and to kind of knock him off of his game. And Kaprizov, from last year to this year, it didn't, I don't know if it became a focal point for him, but he showed he was not afraid to, you know, dish it back if need be. I'm thinking the same thing for Matt Boldy, because if you look at what happened in the series against the Blues, St. Louis really tried to go out of their way to throw the Fiala line out of whack and Fiala played tentatively and just it it really seemed like the Blues did what they needed to in order to throw that line out of sync and take them off their game so then they weren't scoring goals and then the only line you had to really worry about was the Caprice off line so for Matt Boldy as teams see more of him at the NHL level. I'm sure they're going to try to do the same thing that uh, teams did to Kaprizov, is try to take him out of the play and try to prevent him from making his impact. Now, between the two, Kaprizov obviously the speedster, but uh, I think where Boldy can make more of an impact is just by being able to have that that on ice his on ice vision and passing is you know it's it's on a similar level to Matt Zuccarello so if teams are trying to you know put throw one or two guys at him to take him out of the play Boldy is able to make some of those levels of passes that uh, that Kaprizov does and so I think for Boldy you know, he's he's not maybe going to be able to skate past people um, in the way that Kaprizov does. But Boldy's going to become, and already is, a good enough playmaker to where he can take advantage of teams focusing their attention on him to set somebody up to make a play. And so for him, I think he can follow in a similar line as to Kirill Kaprizov is to just... You know, just anticipate that teams are going to be physical with you and try to frustrate you and try to throw you off your game 
So next year, when teams come at him with aggressive four checks and uh, aggressive checks, be ready to just kind of give it back, give it back to opposing teams. And not only that, but um, I think Boldy is going to be better served. I, I think he has shown that he is capable of more uh, opportunities played on the power play, but was mostly a second unit guy um, with obviously Zuccarello, Fiala, Erickson, Kaprizov with all those guys up on that top line. I would think he probably slots in if Fiala is traded to take that uh, top spot on the power play. Cause I, th- I think he's a good enough playmaker to be able to, um, feed off of Kaprizov, feed off of Zuccarello, feed off of Erickson Eck. And I-, I think that would be a unit that, uh, that could do some good things. So, you know, as we, as we kind of transition into like what Matt Boldy needs to do next, like how he can improve his game is, just take advantage of more opportunities. He's going to become probably the uh, the second option on this team next year. The uh, the, the second go to scorer behind Kirill Kaprizov. You know, you got Matt Zuccarello in there as well. I don't know that anybody expects Ryan Hartman and uh, Marcus Foligno to have similar career seasons. It's not out of the realm of possibility, but I think Boldy's going to have to help pick up some of the slack uh, left by potential roster decisions. And so if he does that, if he can take what he did in a little over half a season and do it over the course of a full season, then he has taken a step forward and uh, has, has helped this team further uh, succeed and has helped himself further develop. So in, in just looking ahead to what's next for Boldy, more of the same, more of what we saw from him in his rookie season, if he can continue to do that and uh, continue to be as vital of a contributor as he is already, then he's setting himself up for a great sophomore season. So. Um, expectations for him are going to be very high, and uh, I think he certainly is very capable of uh, living up to them um, as things progress. Now, I did allude to as well, there's going to be a uh, contract situation with Boldy that is going to have to be uh, discussed. And so we'll uh, we'll finish today's episode by taking a look at that and uh, what a potential extension for Boldy may look like uh, after this, you're on Locked on Wild. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports info. You can find all the latest sports developments, news, and odds, including this year's basketball championship matchup, the NHL Hockey Conference Finals, Major League Baseball, and of course, all the latest fighting news from MMA and UFC to boxing, plus already can look at next year's NFL futures. Bet online is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more. So head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. You can find all that and more at Bet Online, where the game starts. Final segment of today's episode of Locked On Wild as we continue our player evaluations. Once your first listen of the day is done, make sure you head over to the Locked On NHL podcast to keep an eye on both the uh, Eastern Conference final and the Stanley Cup final, which will be starting up here in a few days. Of course, the Avalanche already punched their ticket. The Lightning and the Rangers still trying to uh, get theirs taken care of as well. So uh, make sure you're following along with the Locked On NHL podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts. Matt Boldy is a restricted free agent for the 2023 season. And so he's under contract for this season at 880,000. 
roughly over $880,000. And so there's going to need to be a decision made for Matt Boldy and his future going forward. Um, obviously, he can put himself in a great situation by uh, building off of what he did this season and adding to it. But if you look at where things are at for the Minnesota Wild from a cap standpoint, obviously you've got the uh, buyouts for Zach Parisi and Ryan Suter that uh, are in effect until, well, they're in effect in a big way until after the 2024 season uh, when they go down to uh, $833,333 a piece. And so the Wild need to get through this season, next season, and the season after that, and then they are all gravy. Now, obviously for Boldy, he's a restricted free agent for the 2023 season. My assumption, my guess, is obviously the Wild want to keep him around as long as they possibly can. With a player who has come into the NHL at such an early age, age 20 now. So he'll be age 21 throughout uh, the entirety of this season. Uh, his birthday, uh, his birthday was, I believe, in May. So right around the uh, the end of the season. Um, I think it was right around that second to, it, it was one of the Nashville games. So right around the end of the season in April. So he's going to be 21 for pretty much the entirety of the season, then turn 22. And so he will be a restricted free agent when he turns 22. And I think what the hope is for Bill Guerin and company is that they can get him to sign a bridge deal to get the wild through the, uh, the buyouts and, then after that, he can sign a much bigger contract for uh, a bigger piece of the pie. Because if you look at the contract situation for the Wild um, in 2023 and beyond, these are some of the names that start to come off the books at that point. Um, after this coming season, you've got Tyson Jost off the books, Freddie Goudreau off the books. Now, they could certainly re-sign, and it's not like they're – on the hook for a huge amount of money, $2 million for Jost, $1.2 for Goudreau. But further down the line, Matt Dumba is a unrestricted free agent after this season, so his deal will need to be reworked, which means that the Wild could get him at a lower cap number if they decide to sign him to an extension. Cam Talbot will be an unrestricted free agent, and so he may opt for lower or someone else gives him a uh, a higher number elsewhere. Dmitry Kulikov also coming off the books at $2.25 million. So the Wild are going to have money coming off the books the season in which Boldy becomes a restricted free agent. And so I think Bill Guerin will use some of that to get Boldy to a bridge deal um, to get through the buyouts and then give Boldy something bigger um, once they're through that situation and you're basically you're basically keeping on the roster to like you're you're keeping on the books essentially 1.6 million in dead cap money big deal so that would be my assumption as to how things get played um between the Wild and Boldy now is Boldy and is are him and his team going to be receptive to that? That's the other side of the coin. They may look at what he did this year and what the hope is, is that he'll do this coming season and say, well, we're, uh, we're going to want a little bit more than that to, uh, to stick around. So the art of the deal always in play, but uh, all in all, a great season for Matt Boldy and uh, certainly one for him to uh, build off of as he takes on additional responsibilities for the Wilds uh, this upcoming season, uh, which I, I think he certainly, certainly is up for that. 
think he's certainly up to the test uh, for this Minnesota Wild team. So A for Boldy, and uh, we'll finish the week by uh, discussing his line mate, uh, his center, Friday Goudreau, who uh, had really one of the kind of of out-of-nowhere seasons for this Minnesota Wild team. So that's going to wrap it up for today's episode of Locked on Wild. Now that your first listen of the day is done, make sure you head over to Locked on Sports Minnesota to check out the Ron Johnson Show and Superior Sports Talk with Carol Evans, Reggie Wilson, uh, both of which you can find wherever you listen to podcasts. Your best source for news regarding all of your favorite Minnesota sports teams, all as part of Locked on Sports and all free wherever you listen. Just like Locked on Wild is, you can find us anywhere you listen to your podcasts. We encourage you to do so to stay up to date with all things Minnesota Wild related as we navigate through the off season. Also follow us on social media to stay up to date with all the latest Minnesota Wild news. We are keeping you up to date with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked on Sports podcast network.